What's good, y'all? Shaboy Ross back at again with another video. So, we got to talk about what happened on this episode of Friday Night SmackDown, the last episode for SmackDown being on the Fox Network next week. They will be going to the USA Network, and it's crazy to say that Monday Night Raw will be on USA, NXT is on USA, and now SmackDown will be on usa so uh um we uh definitely are gonna see how things play out next week they're hyping it up as a big episode since it's premiering back on usa um but shout out to everyone that was part of the stream man we had a good time tonight but the most noticeable thing that happened on the show was the opening segment with cody rhodes talking to um to uh solo sokoa so cody comes out there and you know he uh, essentially is like, you know, I know I'm going to get interrupted. It's a good chance I'm going to get interrupted. So we might as well go ahead and get the people out here that I'm sure is going to interrupt us. Come on out, Bloodline Solo Sokoa. So they come out and he tells, uh, Solo tells Tonga Loa, Tama Tonga, and Jacob Fatu to stay outside the ring. He's going to go inside and he's going to handle business. So Solo comes in there. He's like, are you done? Are you done talking? Are you ready to finally defend that WWE Undisputed Championship against me? So, and I, I and I like this. I, I really do like what happened here. So, Cody is like, you know what? I am going to, you know, defend, you know, my title against someone that is, uh, you know, worthy enough someone that has finally stepped out of the shadow of roman reigns someone that is you know ready to take on this challenge and it seems like he's talking about solo in fact solo's agreeing with him he's like about time that's what i've been trying to tell everybody you know about time but then he essentially says i'm ready i think it's time for me to have a match against you Jacob Fatu and that was a ooh ah moment because he's like no I'm not talking about you solo I'm talking about Jacob Fatu one Cody you're a brave brave man for even calling him out because this man has been packing everybody up and he did it again tonight but he's like yeah I want to go against you Jacob Fatu and boy oh boy the crowd started buzzing jacob he's like you know kind of looking puzzled so he starts walking up and he gets on the ring apron now solo's looking kind of confused he's like what's going on here like solo's confused like why are you up here and it was such a a tense moment and they were planting the seeds of essentially jacob fatu at some point turning on solo they're planting the seeds i love this i love what cody tried to do there he basically tried to plant a wedge between jacob and solo but eventually solo uh jacob does what he always does i love you my tribal chief i love you my tribal chief and then he steps down he steps down and i was like ah i see what you did there i i, I see exactly what you did there man so, uh, as uh, Jacob steps down, Solo, you know, is like, all right, I see what you're trying to do, but nah, it's going to be you and me next week. And that's when, you know, every, the rest of the Bloodline members start to get into the ring. It looks like Cody's about to be on a 1v4 situation. He's like, well, we got to wait. We can do this right now. And then Street Profits and DIY, they get into the ring to uh, even up the odds with Cody and the Bloodline. And then Nick Aldis comes out of nowhere. He said, nobody's going to fight right now. But I will say this. Next week on the premiere episode of SmackDown on USA Network, we're going to have Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa in a and you know and I like how Nick Aldis said to make things a little bit fair because I'm tired you know I think a lot of us are tired of seeing the bloodline in the numbers game is going to be the title uh Cody versus Solo for the WWE Undisputed Championship in a steel cage match which we know 
steel cage matches don't keep anybody out. So somebody's going to interfere. <laughs> so we know how this happens, how this is going to go down. Question is, who will be that person? Will it be Jimmy? Will it be Roman again? We don't know. But there's going to be some type of interference of some sort next week. So I'm interested to see how that's going to play out. But I like what Cody did here. And I like that they're teasing the idea of Jacob turning. Because he called him out. And if you guys remember, Cody did the same thing with Solo. Cody did the same thing with Solo when Roman was champion. He would call out Solo. He's like, when are you going to step out from under his shadow? And now he's doing the same thing essentially with Jacob because Jacob is the guy that has been packing up everybody. He's the new Bloodline members MVP. He's the MVP right now. Jacob Fatu has been killing it. And we got to talk about what happened later on tonight because he killed it even more. But I love that. I love the idea of them teasing Jacob Fatu turning on solo because i do think that's gonna happen later down the line i do think jacob is gonna be like you know what enough is enough to be honest with you i'm the tribal chief at this point i'm i'm all for it but they're waiting on that so i like the they planted seeds there that was a really good way to start off the show definitely got us excited in the chat and people excited that was watching it in, in attendance so was, let's get to the main event it's uh a, a eight-man tag um, I kind of figured <laughs> that uh, DIY and um, the Street Profits was going to lose here, but it was a it was a solid match. Put in some good offense on both both individuals out there, uh, well, both teams out there. But towards the end of this match, we got to talk about Jacob because Jacob he's he's Jacob. My man packed up everybody. One by one, he as all as the baby faces was getting in the ring, he was packing them up. He was sending them out. He was packing them up one by one, single handedly. He stopped all the baby faces, and he got a good reaction from the crowd too because they have treated this guy as a legit monster, as a star. He is the star in the bloodline. It ain't Solo. Solo's the mouthpiece, but he's the star. And, and I loved exactly what they did here. This was fantastic, beautiful stuff. And, of course, since he's just there as the, the enforcer for Solo, you know, he tagged in. Solo wanted to get tagged in. He tagged, him, uh, tagged in. And then Solo ended up giving Montez Ford a spike. And then he gave him another Samoan spike for good measures for the 1-2-3 victory. And, essentially, Jacob Fatu, once again, is the reason why the bloodline got this win because he is that menacing he's that devastating and i get why they didn't have the tag team titles on him that why they took it off of him and now he's this enforcer role because you want to keep jacob fatu as strong as possible and you didn't want him to be on no lost column yet so love what they're doing for jacob fatu i like this episode in the main storyline centered once again about him maybe one day turning because once again him walking up there and staring at solo and solo's like what are you doing i like that i love that i love that so they can do some things with that and once again him being the one that essentially gave solo the win here they can do some really good stuff with that so comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy this episode of smackdown are you guys interested in seeing how things are going to play out next week for their main event solo versus cody in a steel cage match for smackdown next week and also are you guys liking what they're doing with jacob fatu you like the seeds that they're planning with him potentially turning or you know defecting from the bloodline of some sort of fashion i like what they're doing there y'all let me know how y'all feel about it i appreciate all the love support y'all showing on channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace